Hi, welcome to the next channel. So time to time uh, when I have uh, sessions uh, with my students, uh, especially network uh, software development, uh, they do ask, uh, you know, a common uh, question re related to you know socket options. So it is somewhat, uh, you know, vaguely discussed in my opinion because wherever you find you will get some intro of uh, test uh, socket code and uh, that's what it is and more more than that not much you will find uh, information about uh, fine tuning and uh, you know things like that uh, you know when you create a socket see socket is uh, you uh, you use the apis uh, so that uh, you know the kernel takes care rest of the stuff as you know when you create any udp socket or tcp socket it is actually kernel does inside and uh, it provides this interface so that in the user space you can use the kernel services in the form of you know sockets or network sockets and uh, user space you can send any uh, data application layer data and kernel will bundle it as a UDP uh, packet, win IPv4 or IPv6, whatever you choose in the socket, uh, you know, initialization, and then it sends the packet. So you don't need to do all these things uh, by yourself because the kernel uh, IPv4 stack takes care of that. And sometimes uh, we do have, uh, you know, special situations like raw sockets and, uh, you know, stuff like that where we can cook our own uh, custom protocol uh, packets and stuff. But again, what happens is uh, we can have a lot of control over the same and uh, we can, uh, you know, customize these uh, sockets. And when you customize the socket, actually these instructions goes from user space to the kernel space. Essentially, what you are doing is you are telling the kernel to treat this socket in a unique way by setting your uh, you know socket options so there are some few uh, get set apis are there uh, you can get the socket options uh, the way it has been put forward the default settings you can also set anything and then you can overrule the default settings. so uh, i can uh, do one uh, thing in this uh, uh, you know uh, session uh, what i can do is i can pick any old code uh, see i have done uh, videos on uh, uh, a sample uh, UDP, you know, socket, you can see here UDP socket code for, uh, you know, network software developers and stuff like that. I have done that. So we can pick this code or even I can pick this uh, raw socket code. If I go inside the uh, videos, uh, here you can find somewhere uh, raw sockets. Yeah, you can see here raw socket programming. Yeah, we can pick either of this uh, example. See. We have this raw socket and I have done one example quick protocol uh, packet. So this is uh, uh, like an SSL on UDP and uh, down I have done a video episode on a uh, VoIP SIP packets which is SIP packets uh, on UDP of course and uh, down you can see here I have done an STP uh, protocol packet. So this is a layer 2 slow protocol. It's a multicast uh, slow protocol and then you have this OS proof. So any of these examples we can take, uh, we can take either this UDP code or we can take, see, uh, we just don't want to do a full fledged demo. I just want to kind of touch the socket option so that it gives a sort of intro and then uh, you get that overall big picture you know through this video see what we do is uh, we can uh, take this uh, example see we have this client uh, socket code and you have the server code uh, i can copy paste this code what we do is uh, essentially uh, we just paste this code and what we can do is we, we don't want all this uh, you know uh, other uh, you know parts of the code uh, uh, you know for uh, as quick demo purpose okay so what we do is uh, i mean what i can do is i can just comment this portion this entire stuff uh, maybe i can use some other editor so let me go to this home kiran and uh, i can save uh, this entire code somewhere here yep sock options and put it in underscore sock options dot c yeah somewhat like this okay so what we do is we can comment this uh, other uh, you know sections and uh, we can uh, try uh, yeah yeah somewhere like this uh, let me just comment this entire stuff and uh, let me add a close of 
in our socket uh, file descriptor soc uh, fp and so we have uh, you know opened a socket and we have not done anything and uh, we are just uh, closing okay so that's that's the thing uh, let us see if it gets uh, compiled okay so gcc minus o set uh, soc options soc options dot c so technically it should compile and if you run that soc options as you can see it executes okay let me increase the font size yeah so hope you can see clearly okay so this is what it does and uh, what i have done in my toffee code is uh, it's kind of quite uh, complicated so i have to do lot of combinations and uh, somewhere you can see here i have added uh, some socket options uh, some based on a particular guide uh, for some reason i have to add you can see here i have mentioned uh, this link although it doesn't have much mention about the socket options but couple of them i am just adding whereas other cases i am just increasing the send buffer and receive buffer and stuff because it's a very high performance uh, computing uh, uh, situation what i do in toffee it sometimes i may need to process uh, uh, you know several uh, gigabits of data so it can be a high speed uh, network appliance uh, van opto network appliance and stuff like that so it's a high amount of volume of data i need to process so i need to you know fine tune uh, some of this uh, sockets what i create so you can see here i have done that uh, we can pick one of this example see i have done this uh, get sock options and uh, set sock options uh, we can see uh, you know we can take one of this example see before this i can also show you generally if you go to man page of a socket you can see here they have mentioned all this uh, you know uh, include files you need for socket api and as well as some documentation about various variants of that domain type and protocol whatever you pass for a socket and somewhere you can see they may suggest uh, the set sock option uh, api also yes you can see here get sock opt and uh, set sock opt should be there okay so you can click this and you can uh, i mean you can quit that and you can do a get sock opt you can see here get and set sock opt because this is both are related one you can see what is the options it's been set in the you know linux uh, kernel for that particular uh, socket and the get you can uh, you know get the option what is set in the kernel and set you can overrule and you can set if it is changeable okay so that's what it is and you can see the documentation some some extent you can find and uh, sometimes uh, you can find in internet uh, generally you will get more uh, uh, stuff when you do a set sock opt uh you may get a more uh, you know elaborate man page sometimes okay uh you can see there and you can see some examples over here uh, various uh, socket options you can see here and uh, one more interesting thing is see whatever you set here it is actually as i say it is actually been treated in the kernel and it is honored and applied in the linux kernel space so which is why uh, if you are uh, uh, more keen about how it has been set and what is happening internals i suggest you i recommend you always you can uh search in the kernel source you go here and you can see here there is this uh, you know hash defines you can find uh, in the kernel uh, source you can see here asm socket.h uapi and uh, include uapi so this is where in the kernel space uh, whereas in the user space you can see here it should be in uh, in this uh, include file sys socket.h okay so uh, you can see there you have all this uh, stuff and uh, you know this is what uh, is been honored when you set something and the kernel uh, will accept and then kernel is going to uh, you know change that behavior of the socket so it may communicate through some system calls or maybe an io control or something like that behind the scenes okay so when you use the set sock opt uh, it is actually an abstract api it is uh, it is uh, covering uh, you know the internals uh, you can overrule maybe use uh, some io control or some bare level system call and it is going to do the same job uh, but this is an abstract api it is uh, you know uh, it is recommended rather than you attempt uh, uh, you know something uh, by yourself okay because this api is anyway there okay 
so that's what it is uh, as you can see here in the kernel source it is there and you can go back and you can also see where it is used and you can see here net core uh, soc.c and you can see how it is honoring that and if it is set as something and how it is changing that socket uh, uh, behavior and uh, stuff like that so it is quite useful when you need to fine tune especially the user space uh, uh, socket dependent code if you are doing some uh, custom protocols in the kernel space then it is not applicable because kernel space is directly you have the control of the traffic you can do whatever you want but when you do it from user space uh, you are just using the kernel services so when you use kernel services you need some kind of control and uh, that is why you have this uh, socket options so we pick something which is quite uh, easy to understand uh, see in this uh, list you can see here send uh, buff and and then receive buff is there and it sets the send buff size and sets the receive buff size see please note some of these options you should find it in the proc uh, uh, settings uh, you can go to this uh, let me open another terminal tab so you can go to uh, view zoom in yeah you can go to this uh, proc uh, cd proxys uh, net ipv4 and somewhere you should find all this uh, default see you can see here udp write memory read memory and uh, stuff like that see cat udp r mem min cat udp w mem mim so all this some of this uh, defaults will be there but using that socket options you can overrule that uh, exact transaction or that exact socket whatever you have defined you can overrule some of these settings okay so that way it helps okay so what we do is uh, uh, i can copy paste uh, from my code you can see here i'm just doing the same and uh, uh, yep yeah. yeah it has been put this way and uh, what we can do is uh, we can just copy this i'm just uh, for uh, on a safer side i'm just uh, you know setting a high value but uh, we can more fine tune based on a particular need okay so we can copy that slice of code you can see here uh, socket size and uh, so and so uh, in this case the file descriptor is soc ft not just ft so let me just replace this and rest should be the same uh, yep so you can see there a uh, couple of times i'm doing uh, you know uh, get sock out so that we know what the kernel has the default value for that you know socket being created okay so yes so what we do is we can just uh, comment till here okay this portion of the code we comment and then we can uh, you know run this so that we will know what is the socket uh, uh, receive buffer and send buffer size we are getting from the kernel for that corresponding socket see you can see here we have created a socket file descriptor it is not yet ready to be used because we are initializing over here the actual uh, part so i just commented because it's just anyway not needed for this context see we go back and we compile again and if you run this uh, you can see there the send buffer and receive buffer so it is 212992 which is uh, uh, around uh, 212992 divided by 1024 so it is around uh, 208 uh, kb okay so that's what it is so it is round figure uh, which itself says that it is uh, you know uh, being used as a default to 208 kilobytes so i'm not sure what it is dictating uh, that limit and uh, if you are more curious uh, again you need to dig down the kernel source and find that where it has been set and what is that limit and uh, stuff like that so which is why i'm saying uh, you know uh, people do con confused uh, i want to do some kernel programming uh, they say i want to do some driver development they say but the problem is you need to be good in user space at the same time you need to be good at uh, you know kernel space as well and you need to start from the most easiest thing to the most difficult part is the kernel part and then the device driver so you need to have that flow okay not just uh, jump directly onto some kernel stuff and uh, try to learn um, some kernel basics without any fundamentals or basis of programming okay so that's what so go back here uh, what we can do is uh, we can just uh, attempt uh, 
set sock opt and you can see here generally any size parameter see this is an ongoing code don't decide uh, you know it is uh, based on whatever i put this is what i my fundamentally i'm using for a toffee or something this is still an ongoing research i may change or i may disable this and uh, stuff like that so i was just trying some uh, you know combination so that uh, how i get uh, you know the performance uh, and the behavior the way i want okay so in this uh, generally the size parameters uh, will be uh, two bytes in general the size parameter will be two bytes uh, let's take an example like ip header length or uh, 